Hey, what's happening, guys? If you remember in our video from Monday, we put together this front panel for the headphone amp. And I said, really, we had no way to test it until we got to the main panel. And that is what we're going to be looking at today. So let's first talk about the uh, IC I've chosen to use as the amplifier and why I'm using it. Okay, the IC amplifier I picked is the TDA2822L in the DIP8 package. And as you can see, this is a monolithic integrated audio amplifier, 8-pin DIP, blah, blah, blah. Reason number one, I'm picking it uh, wide voltage range, 1.8 volts to 12 volts. And reason number two, if we look here at the internal block diagram, it is simply two non-inverting amplifiers done with op amps. So pretty simple. And then we come down even further and we can implement it in a stereo implementation or we can bridge one side and run it in a mono implement implementation. But sometimes I have trouble speaking. So let's take a look at the parameters here and some of the actual characteristics. So no more than 15 volts. That's not going to be a problem. You know, we're probably going to run this 9 volts. Peak current 1 amp, uh, we're talking maybe 100, 200 milliamps tops. Power dissipation, max 1 amp or 1 watt, we're not going to get close to that. So quiescent current, 9 milliamps. Not terrible, not fantastic, but not terrible. And a closed loop gain of 40 dB. So if you know dB for every 3 dB, you can't see my hands moving. For every 3 dB gain, you have basically doubled the volume. All right, channel bounce, we can do stereo or we can do uh, the bridge. And then our output power around the half a watt at 6 volts. At 3 volts, we're looking at, you know, a tenth of a watt. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine. So let's uh, get into this then. Well, guys, it's almost Christmas season. And I want to take this opportunity to say a special thank you to each of my patrons. I have 109 patrons who have pledged $443 a month. That is unbelievable. And I am so thankful to each one of you. I literally wouldn't be here without that $443 a month. That pays bills. That allows me to keep operating. And when there's money left over, I buy neat things. Like this Kiprim uh, oscilloscope that we bought and did a video on. <laughs> I love this picture. Okay, it's not plugged in. So they've superimposed some sort of waveform on here. He has an entirely different waveform on the laptop. This is a sine wave. This could be a sine wave, but it's pulsed. You know, there's there's no ground lead here. So, you know, what's a guy looking at? Yeah, doesn't matter. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you. Okay. So here we are. We have the uh, TDA2228L here in the center. Here we have our inputs. There is the uh, positive input one comes over here to pin one. Then the negative input goes to ground. I'm ignoring the second input for now. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with this, whether I'm going to bridge it or do a stereo input. So I just ignored it. Same for the output of number two. Grounds are connected up. <clears throat> Everything is heading over here to this nice, lovely header. And you can see we have for uh, that second to be determined switch, whether I put in a distortion or a bucket brigade chorus or something that'll be added in later and you'll see that when we get to the circuit board so let's have a look at the uh the all right so if you look here you can see our board dimensions are 89.9 wide by 89.02 deep so 89 deep and there is all this extra real estate here just there's nothing there well, there will be later, prob probably. <laughs> Can't say for sure. But that's my plan. So here's a very simple layout. I mean, you could have done it all on a single-sided board. I'm doing it double-sided because, like I said, I don't know what's coming next. And here is a look at the completed board so far. 
and the main front board should fit into it right about there. Have you ever thought to yourself, I've got the perfect idea for a project, but I don't have a box that will fit it or that does exactly what I want? Well, PCBWay has got you covered. Come to PCBWay and go to Sheet Metal, Laser Cutting, and Bending. All you need to do is give them your CAD files, whether it's a .step, STP, X underscore T, IGIS, SLD, PRT, or 2D drawings such as DWG, DFF, or PDFs. Fill out the thing here. You say you understand their content policy and technical data are not controlled under ITAR. They're subject to EAR and are controlled at any level beyond EAR 99. They won't make any weapons. Okay. Your files are strictly confidential and there's an NDA. Right. Anyway. So you put in the number you want, whether you're doing it in millimeters, inches, centimeters, material you want. Thickness, you can do standard thicknesses. Upload your technical drawing. Tell them whether you need threads tapped, inserts, tolerances, whether or not there's going to be any welding, marking, laser engraving, assembly, finished appearance. They can polish it. What kind of inspection you want. Whatever you want. PCB way has got you covered. Check them out. There's a link down below. So Rev 1 of our boards are back. You can see it's really simple. You should be able to see the copper layers, the dark underneath there. Now, generally I wait for you guys before I start playing with anything. But I did take one of the boards and solder in this female header so that I can grab the front panel from our last video and put these together. And see, I didn't take into account that height. So, here's another one, here's another one. I think what I'm going to end up doing is just soldering them in like that. That's the fitment that I was going for. So, I think that's what we're going to do, at least for this first one. So, I've got my... TDA 2822, I've got 100 microfarad cap, 10 microfarad cap, now my calculations called for a 10k resistor, I'm completely out of 10k resistors, but I do have 11k, which is close enough, and 510k, and a power header, so, Mr. Money Penny. Let's say we get this thing started. All right, this is going to be <laughs> not very long at all. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six things to solder in. Now, this is, this is as far as PCBs go, this is kind of an unwieldy big square-ass panel. And I have lots of different soldering aids I can use, PCB holders, helping hands and stuff. But I think for so few components, a little bit of blue tax is all we're going to need. So let's start with the resistors. I have a hard time reading those blue resistor values with my old eyes, so we'll just stick them in the component. Tester this multifunction T7. This thing is great. I like it a lot. All right, what do we got? Round and round the wheel goes. That's my 10K, or in this case, 11K, no problem. So that guy goes there. Which means that this one is our 510K. Let's just measure it. See how far off of 510K it is. And who knows? It might be right on. Bum, 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 bum. 505.7 so yeah it's, it's a wee bit off for our use here it's uh, not going to make much of a difference right, we'll get that out of the way put that down there let's see if we can get you a better 
better view of the limited soldering that will be actually going on here today. Uh, tin the old iron. And away we go. I'm contacting both the pad and the leg, and I am putting a small amount of pressure on it, not a lot. Joint looks good. Resistors are laid down where I want them. Let me just finish this up. You see, I figured this would be easy enough that we wouldn't wouldn't have to worry about, you know, soldering aids and stuff like that, so. That one didn't seem to want to take the solder too well at first, but we got her. Alright, I think next I'm going to put in battery connector yeah for this we're going to use some blue tack see how it's stuck on there that'll hold that perfectly for us I have the camera in a strange place for me it's like off to the side over here it's normally right in front of my face but try and give you guys a different angle and also get back some of my depth perception when I'm soldering no how well you can see but that pad there is just a little real real blobby I don't like that That's better. Okay, change in the camera position again. <clears throat> there is our 10 microfarad. Now you could, whoop, there, where are we at? You could bend them over, you know. Solder them something like that, but when you're going to end up putting this front panel and later a back panel on here, there's going to be plenty of room in there, so that's not going to pose any problems whatsoever. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to elevate that just a hair above the board. See that just just very very slightly I mean there's yeah there's not gonna be any danger whatsoever of this thing overheating unless there's a short or something you know but man there's some tiny solder pads but I do just want to give it a little bit. Of airflow. No, that'll, that'll definitely do it. So far, it looks all right. I'm gonna reflow that. It's grouchy looking pad there a little bit. And just for good measure, I'm gonna reflow that one too. Okay. 
So before I put that other one in there, just because that was so much trouble to deal with, I'm going to get some of uh, Uncle Rob's Magic Solder Flux. And generously flux that. Hopefully that will help. But yeah, you know, I think it will. All right, let's see what we got going on now. Yep, it's still not taking so long. Take it that time, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. That time it did for sure. So what I'm going to do here, so I'm going to clip off this one that I just did. reflow it a little bit I'm having trouble telling yeah it is not in there at all the solder is just not wanting to adhere to that pad still We get it now? No. What the heck? All right, out it comes. One moment. All right, guys. I have no idea what was going on here, but it took. You gonna focus? It took forever. There's not a lot of solder on those pads, but it is soldered in. Wow, that was that was amazingly difficult to get that to take that solder. I'm guessing it's probably my cheap um, there, it is, there it is my cheap pack of capacitors that I'm using. You know, could be debris on the legs or you know a cheaper type of material. So what I ended up doing basically was flooding that. I just stuffed as much solder on top of it as I could. Look at that. There's a component leg. Stuck in my blue tech. All right, hopefully this will work better. Let us find out. Yeah, it worked all right. Hmm. Yeah, now these are just going just absolutely fine. So, yeah, nothing with the board. It had to have been the uh, the components themselves. No worries. What is it Kangaroo Dave says? No wackas? Oh, no. oh you got to be shit. You know what? Who's next? Alright. I am not proud of the soldering on this job at all, but it's what it took to get it done. To get those capacitors to solder in there, basically, had to just flood solder in there until it finally took, and I don't know what was going on with it. 
um, <clears throat> where we're at so far, everything we have so far is assembled. Um, I don't like how I wired this one. You can see that little piece of wire is kind of down there in a the crease. That ain't good, but I think I've kept you fine people long enough for today. So we'll do the next video is where we'll put some power to it and give it a test. But yeah, I think that's enough for today. It's enough soldering for me, that's for sure. Anyway, I wanted to show you the two kits I used to build this. This is where the uh, amplifier came from. And this one is where I got my electrolytics from. So Both of these are available on Amazon. Yeah, you can get them if you're interested. I'll put links in, you know. You know how it goes. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, next part, we'll put some power to it and test it. Thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. Thanks to you for watching this video. And thanks to my sponsors who, I mean, my patrons. I, I, I just couldn't be here without them. And I'm working on some uh, special Christmas gifts I'm going to be sending out here in the next couple weeks for my top tier patrons, the very, very special ones. And it, it's nothing super special, but what I've got here are some really neat old silver dollars. And I'm gonna send them each a silver dollar. Like there's a 1971, this is a bicentennial, 76, 77, 72, 72. Yeah, you don't need to see that. So if you're interested in being a patron, look down below, there's a link. Buck a month is all I ask. Helps keep the channel going. All right, guys. That's it. I'm out. Peace.